Hi, everyone. Welcome to Elko Chats. Elko Chats is a podcast where we feature El Camino College students, graduates, faculty, staff, and managers. And today I have the great opportunity to talk with Dr. Renee Lozano, who is the Transfer Center Coordinator. And we're here to talk about all things transfer. So, Renee, welcome. Thank you. First things first. Transfer is a word that we hear a lot. It's possibly a student's educational goal. But tell me, what does it mean when we say transfer and why would students want to transfer? Well, transfer can mean a lot of things. Um, I'd like to think that it stands for transformative and, 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 and wanting students to come and discover who they are and what they want to do with their lives in a more you know bigger way or wider way but to transfer what it means really is to take the opportunity to use a community college as a springboard in order to start their bachelor's uh, degree um, i always tell students the university life starts with us you're just doing the first couple of years of your degree with us um, but to transfer means to go to a university to complete the degree that you're hoping to pursue um, as a bachelor's major um, and we need to transfer them because we don't have the coursework here uh, in order for them to achieve that of course in the meantime we're going to always encourage that for them to get their first AA degree with us because that's a very practical thing they can use at the university level for either getting a job and or um, a paid internship but you know we do need to transfer them in order for them to complete that final. And you said AA degree, but I know, and I know we like to use a lot of acronyms here at El Camino. What does AA mean? Yes, thank you for asking. So it's an Associate of Arts or an Associate of Science degree in whatever field they pick. Sometimes it's in the same major they apply for for the university, sometimes it's not, and that's okay because that just makes them a more diverse uh, student on the resume in the future or diverse applicant for a job, having uh, multiple degrees with different uh, emphasis. Okay. And for students who do intend to transfer when they first apply to El Camino College, when should they start looking into getting transfer ready? I love that question. I think that transfer starts the very first day that they set foot on El Camino College, right? You shouldn't find out about how to achieve transfer requirements at the tail end of your stay here because you might miss some steps. You might miss some courses. You might make some mistakes in the course selections that you made. So transfer should start from day one Students should start talking to counselors from day one and, make, and ensuring that they have an ed plan that will cover all of their transfer requirements, not to mention what partnerships with having universities, um, meeting with representatives from universities to start hearing it from the horse's mouth. Um, we facilitate a lot of that by connecting them at college fairs that we coordinate, my office coordinates, to make sure that they meet with those um, representatives early on. So the earlier, the better. Because number one, they'll know about all of their options up front. But number two, they'll have an ed plan that incorporates as many options as possible. And I think that as a transfer counselor, my goal is to make sure that students have all of the options and should not be limited from day one. And I think it's important, like you mentioned, from the day you set foot on campus or really from the day you apply, that's really when you start getting transfer ready. Absolutely. And I have some set of questions here, but I'm going to jump off something that you said earlier. Because you do oversee the transfer center. So what are those things that the transfer center provides to help students to get transfer ready? Well, we believe that we do it all and that we are at the stage of the, the ha we handhold our students at every stage of the transfer process. So from day one, when they're at the expiration stage, we have workshops on how to be admitted into a UC, a Cal State, a private, and out of state, just to, for them to explore options and know even how to approach becoming eligible for those institutions. Um, when they're here, ensuring that they have an ed plan that semester by semester they are following to ensure that they will be admitted to the schools that they want. And then as they're at the tail end of their stay, ensuring that they know how to fill out an application, how to write that perfect uh, mini essay or short-term essays that the universities want. Um, and even like after they apply, like when do you send transcripts? When do you... Um, Set an update on your grades. I mean, so we literally walk the transfer journey with each individual student, I believe. And, and I think that's wonderful because we're true partners with them in their transfer process every step of the way. And we're very proud of that. 
And I'm happy to say that uh, on a personal level, you were definitely the person that was my go-to when I transferred from El Camino College to UC Berkeley. And I think one of the things that you did is you allowed me to open my eyes to the possibilities. I think I was very limited into um, my possibilities and my future. And part of that was because as a first-generation college student, I just didn't know what the possibilities were. And one of those things that I took advantage of um, when I was a student at El Camino were the college or university tours. Tell me a little bit about that and why they're important. Yeah, I, we, I mean, it's one of my favorite things too, to take students to universities because there's no substitution for having a student go experience the campus life, the culture around the campus. Um, are they looking for a small town? Are they looking for a big city? Do they want a lot of activity on that campus or to be more of a quiet campus where they can sort of, you know, just be, you know, every student has a different personality and I believe that every university does too. So it's about finding that perfect match between the university and the student. Uh, but I'm very proud that we can take students on a tour to talk to the representatives there about admission, to find out what their options are when it comes to uh, on-campus housing, uh, financial aid and scholarships, um, and even just to talk to other students, right? To say, hey, how do you like, tell me about why you like coming here, right? Making those connections. Uh, we, I also believe that when we create a community within our own students, because then they get to meet each other there and say, oh, wow, you're thinking of coming here too? Let's talk. Let's, let's, let's talk about applying together and what have you. Um, especially for our Northern culture, we're bringing it back this year. Um, it's amazing to provide to students that, quite frankly, you mentioned being first gen, so am I. A lot of us didn't have the chance to even leave LA, right? And so to be able to take them to Northern Cal, it's the state of California, but it's almost like another world for a lot of our students. The first time they go that far and travel that far. And we've had students on this tour, like literally in tears, just from the, they feel overwhelmed from the emotion of, of seeing themselves somewhere slightly different. Um, and we have been very successful at not having, not only having them apply to these universities, but actually accept that the university offers and are now very happy, self-actualized students Northern Cal area that represent El Camino really well. That's amazing. I think through all of the services that you all provide, the university fairs, the assistance with the applications and the campus tour, you really help students to become transfer ready. And again, that other nice benefit of just seeing the possibilities um, is something that you all make happen. So now getting to the nitty gritty, what are the minimum requirements for students who are thinking about transferring to the university from El Camino College? It does vary, but for the public schools, for the Cal State system, it's uh, 60 units with a 2.0 and some basic general ed courses like English, critical thinking, uh, oral communication and math. Uh, for the UCs, 2.4 with a couple of English classes and math and some other GEs as well without going into the details. Um, privates and out-of-states tend to be a lot easier and that really surprises students because they expect it sometimes to be harder to transfer out-of-state or private to a private school. And what I love to say to them is California sets the bar so high in terms of requirements that if we prepare you for California, we prepared you for the whole country. And that puts a smile on their faces because that means that we are in a state that holds transfer so high and, and yeah, it can be strict in some ways and can be restricted, but at the same time, super prepares our students to be transfer ready across the nation. We even have students to go to like the Ivy League schools and, and things of that schools of that nature, which again makes us proud that we at El Camino are preparing students to truly go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, um, what does high, how is, what is the role of high school in the transfer process? And again, I'm going to go back to my experience as an El Camino college student not knowing anything i always thought you know i would come to el camino be here for two years and then transfer and be there for another four years again not understanding the process but also i didn't realize what or how my high school transcripts would impact my transfer mm -hmm. process so tell me a little bit about the importance of high school transcripts or how what does the role of high school play in the transfer experience that's such a good question because i have two things to say about that what role does it play in transfer admissions? Not a big one, right? Um, students truly have a second chance and a fresh start as community college students. So even the big UCs or what have you, or the Cal States are never gonna say to a student, we need your, your high school grades in addition to your college grades. 
in, in order to offer you admission. So that part I like because in some ways, even if a student did well in high school, truly gives that a students that chance to feel like they get a fresh start and, and get to like sort of reinvent themselves mm -hmm. with with which if we're honest for a lot of our first gen low income students they need that right it, I'm, I'm so proud to be part of a system that truly gives every student that second chance no matter where they start um having said that though i do want to say that i'm not saying that high school is not important obviously we know as educators here that the more prepared they come from high school and the better they performed in high school, the better college students are also going to be right. They don't have to they can hit the ground running because all of those uh, study skills and time management skills that they learn from high school are going to serve them well as community college students. And so I, I, I always like to clarify that because I'm not saying that high school is not important, but at the same time, it's nice to know that it's not going to be another barrier for students if they feel that they could have done better and did not. Absolutely. So if in high school I wasn't prepared to apply to the four-year university, then I apply to El Camino, I you know complete my minimum requirements and probably more, and then I can head out to a school like UC Berkeley, for example. Exactly. And that's what makes me so proud to be part of a system that will allow a student to, to, to give them that second chance to perform well. Because we know that a lot of times it's the K through 12 system that failed our students. It's not lack of intelligence, lack of motivation or what have you. Um, I, in fact, I don't even like to use the word high school dropout. I like to use the word high school push out. We push out a lot of our students for various reasons, especially from certain communities out of our high school because the resources are just not there. Uh, but then they come here and they flourish and they become, and they are those, they prove that they are those very intelligent, uh, motivated students that they've always known they were, but didn't have, that that place that sort of like fostered that for them and i believe el camino is that place that fosters that for them. absolutely so well, we talked about second chances but are there and what are some circumstances when a student cannot transfer to the university if any i mean we can name a lot of personal things right for a lot of students it could be financial it could be um they have to help the family and work uh it could be you know um just lack of resources overall. But I do also think that a lot of those are perceived. Again, being a first gen, a lot of us perceive barriers that we think, oh, I can't afford there, or I'm not UC material, right? And I think that our job is also to sort of demystify some of that. So even though there's some truth there, there's also a lot of myths. And um, I love that part of our job, that we can demystify some of that for our students and dream bigger than sometimes they dream for themselves. I guess the other barriers are more institutional. Um, unfortunately, in California, because we set the bar so high, um, some of the consequences are that there's just too many students applying to universities in California from out of state and from in state. And so there's just a lot of admissions policies without going into the details that sometimes can create extra barriers, such as impaction, right? Majors that just have too many applications for the spaces that they have available. Or in the case of Cal States that set um, local area admissions policies where they give priority to some of their students in their backyard versus like El Camino. So those, those I, I think we have some work to do as California educators, maybe via legislation to mm -hmm. change some of that. But, um, you know, I would say those are the barriers that, that, that we are all should be responsible for addressing. And it sounds like the transfer center and the transfer center team can really help uh, demystify some of those barriers. Absolutely. All of our workshops and, and even in a lot of our, you know, um, anything that we do, there's there's some group counseling that takes place, right? Unintentionally or intentionally, where we talk about a lot of those things. So not only on our one-on-one -on -one appointments, but in every group setting that we offer students, we talk about out loud and name these things. Because sometimes it's just about naming them mm -hmm. for students to be aware of what uh, that they're, what they're experiencing, that they're not alone, that it is normal, and that it is something that someone is paying attention to and can help them address it. Thank you for sharing that. Um, now, when students apply to El Camino, we come in with certain educational goals. And we have a mutual friend, for example, that thought they were going to come to El Camino, take a class in automotive technology so that they can learn how to fix their car, which turned into, well, let me get that certificate in automotive technology. And so what about students who come to El Camino thinking, I'm going to get a certificate, and somehow along the way, they figure out maybe transfer is for me. So are they able to change their mind, change their goals, and what's that process for students? 
Yeah, and you know what? I, I like if, if a student thinks I'm going to get a short term career, short term a associate's degree. That's great. That's the way we hook them, right? I believe that education is one of the most positive influences we, that, that are out there. And if we can hook them to come do something practical first for their for their for their own sake, for whether they want a, a craft or learn a trade or even just they're curious about something. If that's what gets them in through our door, then that's wonderful, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Um, again, because we are a system that allows students to explore. We are a system that allows students to get to know themselves first. Um, and we are a system that allows a student to easily switch majors without a restriction. That is how they can go about it. But, you know, I get it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process and we need to let students discover that process through themselves. Luckily, we have services like the Career Center, human development coursework, things that are going to help them do some of that exploration um, in order for them to get there. They're not going to do it alone, that's for sure. But um, absolutely, it's very easy for them to change. And obviously, if it were up to me, I would make every student a transfer student, not because earning an associate's degree in something they want to earn and stopping there is a bad thing. But we know as educators, or at least I want to believe that as educators, we're always going to encourage more education in any field that they get into, right? So like an auto tech student can become one day an engineer through a master's degree. Right. And, and it has happened. And so I will never apologize when I say to students, the more education, the better, because that can never be a bad thing. And I hope the student that we know did get take that class, fix their car, but she continued on and now that's she's right. a doctor of education. That's so right. that's amazing. That's right. Now, at El Camino, we also love acronyms, and there's one acronym that I want you to talk to us about, and it's called TAG. Mm -hmm. What is TAG? What should people know about TAG? Why, why are they important? And just tell us about the benefits of TAG. Yeah, TAG stands for Transfer Admission Guarantee. Um, I'm very, very happy to know that our public universities have a true commitment to transfer students. I think there's also a myth out there that universities are seeking out a certain student, but not necessarily community college students. And TAG is the ultimate proof that that is not true. Because universities, like the six UCs that we have tags with, um, we have Davis, Santa Cruz, and Merced up north, Riverside, Santa Barbara, and Irvine down south. When they created the tags, and I know this because I come from the UC system, they only had community college students in mind. And so talk about putting their money where their mouth is, where a system that with that reputation, right, actually seeks out our transfer students from a community college and offers them a guarantee. That's not something that any high school student, no matter what their GPA is, could have ever been offered from the high school level. So um, I just think it's wonderful. It's a wonderful testament of how the UCs have made a, 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 an actual commitment to our California community college student by offering them a guarantee. Uh, we're proud to say that not only do we have them with those six UCs, but we have them with LMU, a local private partner, ASU, uh, so, uh, Arizona State University, um, you know, and then uh, we're very proud to be the first ever community college to establish in historically black colleges and universities. Um, Elaine Moore, I like to give credit where it's due, right? Uh, Elaine Moore took a sabbatical, one of our former counselors, to create this. And now it's a statewide thing. Mm -hmm. It's not just an El Camino thing, but I'm proud to say that we were the pioneers of that. Um, and so, and and it's and by the way, it's a constant thing. We're creating more partnerships as we speak. That's one of my my missions in the college here to continue creating more uh, guarantee opportunities for our students. That's amazing because I think there's not many things that are guaranteed in life to right. to say that we have these guaranteed admission opportunities to six of the UCs. And I believe right now it's 39 historically black colleges and universities yes. that students can tag with. So that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So now for some advice for students who are thinking about um, applying to El Camino College, what advice do you have for them? Oh my goodness, where do I start? Okay, the first thing is um, to connect with us early. And I think that outreach and other programs on this campus have done a great job of making sure that our students are connecting with us early. Um, because the earlier that you know information, the better in terms of your planning. But also, I think we know that as faculty and staff, we serve as the cultural capital for our students, right? They, they want to connect with people that with faces and people that they can come to. For a lot of first-gen students, they have loving families that support them in their own way. 
but loving families that don't have the information that they need, mm -hmm. right? So we become sort of that second extended family for our students because they can talk to people that have been through that process, right? We, we, we've earned degrees. We know what the college journey is like. And so that mentoring component, that aspect of, of the human side of like education is important. That's why if you notice, I'm wearing a t-shirt that talks about Puente, one of our strong programs that fosters learning, community learning on our campus. Um, and I've been a mentor for it for a long time because I believe that's the key for students to feel connected and, and feel wanted by a, an institution. We know that research shows that the more connected a student is to a campus, the more they wanna stay at the campus and continue their degree, helps with the retention and things of that nature. So the earlier the better so that we can connect them with all of these programs and, and introduce them to the key people that are gonna be their partners in all of this. Um, and also to explore early, right? To explore early what majors we offer, what partnerships we have with universities um, and use every service possible. We, we don't want students to find out that they could have borrowed a laptop a year later, right? Mm -hmm. Or that they could have applied for financial aid to pay for their classes a year later. So that's, that's my advice. Ask those questions early, ask them often, and meet as many people as possible that will help you out with anything that you need at El Camino. Thank you. I know the, one of the last students that um, I interviewed specifically mentioned your name as somebody who helped them along the way. And I also just want to take this opportunity to formally thank you for changing my life. Because again, you know, applying early and getting connected, you know, thankfully I connected with you early along the way and the possibilities for me just became endless. And uh, with your help, I was able to apply and get accepted to all of the UC campuses that I applied to. And I ended up at UC Berkeley. And like you said, it was that NorCal trip wow. that I participated in and and saw what my future could be. So I'm, I'm happy to be back here helping students and working with people like you who just make this a very possible dream come true for our students. So thank you so much for everything that you do. Thank the team at the Transfer Center and thank you for taking the time to chat with me today. Thank you, Julieta. And I would like to say, and I'm so glad you said that about the team, right? Uh, it's not, believe you me, uh, yeah, the passion for it com comes from me and I have a lot of that, but. It is a team effort, and I'm very lucky to have a team that makes all of this happen. I don't do it alone. But thank you for saying that, because that fills up my my counseling soul, so to speak. It feeds my counseling soul to hear you say that. There's not a, there's not a stronger thank you than a thank you from a student, you know? Um, and that's what it's all about. And now here you are painted forward for the rest of our students. So how could I not be proud of being part of that? Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for coming in today. I appreciate you. See you next time.